Cynthia Ryland is an American author of over a hundred children's books in English and Spanish. She writes for children of all ages in fiction, nonfiction, and poetry. Cynthia Ryland was born on June 6, 1954 in Hopewell, Virginia. Her parents divorced when she was only four years old and she went to live with her grandparents in Coal Ridge, West Virginia. It was somewhat of a tough living for she and her grandparents. They did not have electricity or running water, so Ryland was always outside running about and finding fun things to do. When her mother finished nursing school, she moved back in with her in Beaver, West Virginia. This is where Ryland grew up and went to school, and even though it was not a perfect childhood, it was where most of the inspirations for her stories came from. In a short autobiography, Ryland stated, Growing up, I loved comic books, cats and dogs, pajama parties, and the Beatles. I wasn't very creative. Playing is still the greatest training you can have, I think, for being a writer. It helps you to love life, it helps you to relax, and it helps you to cook up interesting stuff in your head. Cynthia Ryland has always been one of my favorite authors. I loved her since I was just a little girl. The biggest thing that now draws me to Ryland is how much she loves animals. You will find many in her books. She has said that taking walks with her dogs is her favorite pastime, and it is the main thing that helps her with her thinking and her writing. I can definitely relate to her. Ryland attended Morris Harvey College in 1975 and earned a bachelor's degree. She then attended Marshall University in 1976 and earned her master's degree. Ryland was then able to find a job in her field after she finished college, so she first worked as a waitress and then as a librarian. It was then when she was 23 years old that she was introduced to her first children's book. On her website, Ryland stated, Believe it or not, I really didn't know about children's books until I grew up. Where I lived in West Virginia, there wasn't a library nearby, and my school didn't have a library, so I read comic books and Nancy Drew books, which I bought myself. While working in the library, Ryland fell in love with children's books and would spend hours at night reading as much as she could. It was then that she knew she wanted to be an author and write children's books of her own. In 1982, Cynthia Ryland published her first children's picture book, When I Was Young in the Mountains. This book only took her one hour to write, and it became a quick hit and a much-loved book to this day. When I Was Young in the Mountains is a Caldecott Honor Award book, and is based on her life with her grandparents. In the story, she tells us about some of her most vivid memories, and the illustrations follow along with the text so wonderfully, they make you feel as if you are right there reliving her childhood with her. From then on, she continued to write wonderful stories for children and young adults alike. She is the author of contemporary novels and historical fiction for young adults, middle grade fiction and fantasy, lyrical prose poems, beginning readers, collections of short stories, volumes of poetry and verse, books of prayers and blessings, two autobiographies, and of course, picture books. She once said, I like writing picture books because that medium gives me a chance to capture in a brief space what I consider life's profound experiences. Grandmother crying at a swimming hole baptism, a family planting a garden together, relatives coming for a visit. There is a poignancy and beauty in these events, and I don't want to write adult poetry about them because I'll have to layer it with some adult delusionment. She went on to write many children's picture books for four to eight year olds, and even created several book series. Poppleton is a cute series about a big sweet pig named Poppleton. Ryland makes it easy and fun for children to read about his fun adventures. Mr. Putter and Tabby is another great series for children. It tells the story of an old man, the young tabby cat that he adopted, and all the fun adventures they go on from there on out. The Henry and Mud series is definitely my favorite children's book series by Cynthia Ryland. As many of y'all know, I'm crazy about dogs, and as a young girl I had almost all of the books from this series. There is nothing more wonderful than having a big dog as your buddy when you're a small child. 
Henry and Mudge is about a little boy who didn't have any brothers or sisters or friends on his street to play with. He begged and begged his parents for a dog, and one day they said yes, and he picked out his little puppy. Mudge soon turned into a 180-pound lovable big dog and Henry's best buddy. The series tell about all the fun adventures Henry and Mudge go on, and how happy Henry is to finally have a best friend by his side every day. I again can relate. She went on to write other great picture books like The Great Gracie Chase, Hansel and Gretel, and The Old Woman Who Named Things, just to name a few. In 1985, she wrote her first young adult novel, A Blue-Eyed Daisy. Then in 1986, she wrote her second novel, A Fine White Dust, and it won a Newbery Honor Book Award. In this book, a young boy grows and develops a more mature understanding of love and faith. In 1992, Cynthia Rylett wrote and published Missing May. It won the Boston Globe Horn Book Award for Fiction and the Newbery Medal. Missing May is about a young girl named Summer who is passed on from relative to relative after the death of her mother. She finally meets her Aunt May and Uncle Obi and they take her in and love her when no one else would. She found a comfort with them like no other, but is suddenly hit with more grief when Aunt May passes away in the garden one day. Summer knows that she not only has to deal with her own sadness, but also has to help Uncle Obi through his. The story follows the young family as they try to make contact with Aunt May through the afterlife. When Uncle Obi is not able to talk to his beloved May again, he snaps out of his depression and knows he has to continue living for Summer. Ryland has continued to write wonderful books for children and adults alike. In the book Every Living Thing, she once again helps people to see how amazing and important animals are in our lives. There are 12 short stories in this book that captures the moment when someone's life changes and when an animal helps a human to see the world in a different way, in a beautiful way. In her autobiography, Best Wishes, Ryland describes her life and her writing and how they are interwoven. The pictures show her walking, working, visiting, and observing, and they suggest that much of writing is invisible, but happens inside of us. In 1995, Cynthia Ryland wrote and illustrated my favorite book to date, Dog Heaven. Dog Heaven is a touching read for any dog lover, child, or adult. Her illustrations paint a beautiful picture of what our beloved dogs see when they leave this world. Here there are fields to run in, soft beds made of clouds turned inside out, and angel children, because God knows that dogs love children more than anything else in this world. I recently lost my beloved 15-year-old dachshund Bingo, and it comforts me to read Ryland's book and picture Bingo as a young pup once again, running around in dog heaven. I'd like to close this up with my favorite excerpt from Cynthia Ryland's autobiography, Best Wishes. Sometimes your best wishes really do come true. When I was a little girl, I used to wish for a pretty house with a big picture window, a faithful dog who loved me, cats, and a chance to do something important. I did a lot of wishing for a lot of things. And when I was grown, I got many of those things. I got the house with the window, the faithful dog, the cats, and I also did something important. I became a writer. Writing has given me a sense of self-worth that I didn't have my whole childhood. I'm really proud of that. The books have carried me through some troubled times and have made me feel that I am worthy of having a place on this earth.